Hey horror fans, Bordnell back with you on this video. I'm going to be talking about the new horror release, Tarot. So this is a new Sony Movies film. And the setup is then a bunch of teens slash early 20-something. They're students. They're pretty interchangeable as well. They head out for a weekend away to a retreat. And they decide, what the hell, let's play a game of tarot, which apparently is quite a popular card game involving horoscopes. And one of them, Haley, happens to be an expert in this area. That's explained later because she got into it when a relative died. The relative was in into that stuff. So they play the game and she reads out what their futures are going to hold based on the horoscopes and and the way the cards come out and the way the movie then happens is then the fates start to come true and there's some supernatural stuff which leads to the horror plot to them all being put in danger and there's a whole explanation in the middle of the movie for this which ties back into a centuries old witch's curse involving a count and the whole shebang. So that's the setup for the movie. So having stunk up the cinemas with most of their movies, bar the Spider-Man films maybe, then this is Sony attempting to do horror. And I, I went in expecting this to be really bad. And my only hope was then... It would be so bad it was good and that there was some goofy fun and laughs to be had. Sadly, there wasn't. It's very bland, very generic. The characters are extremely annoying and boring. I mean, mostly boring. I don't know if I would say many of them were annoying. I did find Haley to be very annoying, like the main girl, if you want to call her that. But... Yeah, no, there was just nothing to this, really. It wasn't scary in any way. It wasn't original in any way. As I said, the characters were very interchangeable. It's funny, because when you put the name of the movie into Google, like, I just got some Im images for it, and I put images for Charan, and I expected the movie to come up, but it doesn't. The cards actually come up, so uh, that's really funny. Those crazy, these crazy kids nowadays, they must be bringing this stuff back. But I had no idea that's what it was, and that it's a real thing. And I'll say straight away, the best part of the movie probably is the gag about the name of the movie. Then you say it Taran, not Tarant, Tarat, or. However you, however you people would say it if they didn't know it was a silent T. And that's a gag in the first few minutes of the movie. But the trouble is, Haley especially then repeats the name of the movie about five times in that scene, which is just overkill. So the setup is pretty weak. It's very slow and plodding. The opening scene as the setup for the movie takes way too long. I guess I'll talk a bit about the characters because they are just super plain and they lack any real personality. They're very dull to watch. They're very dull to listen to. <laughs> Mediocre acting at best. It's definitely not the worst acting I've seen in one of these like generic studio horror movies. Some of them, I want to say, are definitely okay and, and maybe in other things they could be better it, it does have the the sidekick, the the um, nerdy friend from Spider Man, and because it's a Sony movie, I'm guessing there. Yeah, he's under contract, so let's get him in. But yeah, the acting wasn't terrible. It was just mediocre, and and some were worse than others. The dialogue is so monotone, though, so monotron and bland throughout. Like the way they're having conversations, it's it's just like 
you you could just throw in any random words into what they're saying and and the way they deliver it they deliver it with no passion and and it's sort of like yeah yeah i i wish we never played that card game yeah i get that it's sort of stuff like that pretty much there's forced drama that's set up from the start between Haley and her ex-boyfriend because they've recently split up and and that becomes a whole thing he gets pissed off at her because he thinks she might be reading him a bad hand because of them breaking up and the false drama is there from the start between the two of them and of course they probably no surprise in they become two of the ones that actually survive i'll get to the third one later but it's like yeah, I didn't care about them, their relationship, their tension. They had no chemistry, the two actors. Also, I've got to say, uh, who wrote this? I mean, did a 50-year-old write this? Because whoever wrote it has no idea about young people, I've got to say. Because, I don't know, to me it seems like you would have to be about 50, at least, to be into horoscopes. And and to want to do it on a weekend away. These are like college students. They're getting away for the weekend. They're letting their hair down. And even though Haley has an interest in it, it's like I'm sure they would all, including her, choose to do something a, a bit more fun. Also, in the next morning, one of them buys a scratch card and he wins $700. And, and they don't really do anything with that. It's just part of the horoscope and he's going to come into money. But then that leads partly to his fate. So I get why it's there. But also it's like, well, yeah, but he's in his early 20s, teen, late teens, early 20s. Uh, I'm pretty sure nobody that young buys scratch cards. It's it's just insane. I mean, I don't think whoever wrote this has ever met a teenager. We also get the annoying trope now of the crime po- podcast. It's funny how fast that has become a cliched. And you've got the Spider-Man guy who's there for comic relief. And when he first, like, makes them listen to the podcast for, like, the four-hour journey back, I got a little bit of a chuckle out of that. One of the few chuckles. But when he kept coming back to it later, it got really annoying. And I think that guy seems to be in a different movie because... There wasn't a lot of comedy in this. It could have done with more comedy. The comedy they had wasn't very good, but it, it's like, yeah, suddenly in the middle, or, or like at least a, a bit into the film, he started wisecracking a bit, and he started acting like a, a scream character. And that's a good point to bring up. This does feel like a a really lame, half-hearted rip off of scream and also final destination because of the way the fate angle is worked in and and it all comes down to these like very random sort of deaths and there's a scene in the middle which is very scream where spider-man guy as i'll keep calling him just keeps getting paranoid and starts what because at this point two of the friends have died in mysterious circumstances and it's like, yeah, he, he starts throwing out accusations like one of us could be a killer. So that was a very scream type scene, but obviously nowhere near as good. There's no real... We don't really get to know the characters in any sort of way. There's no payoff to, to anything really because after the first girl dies like there's an awkward scene with two of the characters walking home and you sense there's a little bit of a vibe between them and they sort of hug before he says goodnight to her and then he goes on to die i think he's the one who who won the money but that's sort of a very like weak kind of okay they had a moment there he hugged her before he, he left, that probably means he's going to be the next victim. That's as close as this film comes to, like, a set, like a proper setup. So, the fi- 
Well, Hayley is a very annoying character. Like, her insistence on this stuff and the way her dialogue is so repetitive and the way she, like, keeps rambling on and on about the damn cards and just her whole obsession with it really grates over the course of the movie. I guess I'll talk about the kills next because the kills are really lame as well. Very generic horror movie kills. They seem to fo- like feature a lot of objects, a ladder, a bridge. The elevator scene is the worst in- involving Spider-Man guy. And along with these like kills and set pieces you you got these really bad like objects appearing like horror themed objects with really dodgy and hokey looking makeup and costumes and bad cgi once again ropey cgi but the elevator horror moment was the worst for me i mean that really sucked the way it was shot the way it was drawn out and the colour palette of this film is is really bleachy and ugly and, and not very interesting to, to look at. But dumb cheesy horror gimmicks for like the big kill scenes. Crappy CGI like I said. Like it just looks very bad and there's just nothing to the direction in no scene. Probably the best of a bad bunch is when... The Asian girl quite late in the movie. She's one of the last one to die. She might be the last one to die. But she gets trapped in like like a box. And it's to do with the magic trick. trick like the saw in half magic trick. And you've got like an audience. And not that it was a good scene. Like the way it was directed. But that, that was probably the, the best of like a bad bunch. But a lot of this stuff it just felt like. Almost like something you would throw on like a very cheap, cheesy anthology type series. And it would just, it's either good or it's not. But it it felt very much like this. The film felt very choppy and yeah, it didn't, didn't really have any sense of it being like this connected type film. It was very predictable. It ran through the cliché, so they did the internet search at one point, looking up the history of this thing. They then contacted contacted an expert, went to see her. You get this bullshit backstory, which is very un... Well, very just clichéd and by the numbers. It all, always makes me laugh as well. The cards have survived all these years. It's the same cards as like centuries ago. It's like, how how are these cards still around? How are people still playing them? And it's funny because at one point the old lady is like, I've now decided it's a bad idea having these cards. Around. It's like she's listing all these incidents over the decades like incidents, I don't know, in the 50s, in the 80s, but all these various instances. And suddenly, because of this now, it's like, I've decided to destroy the cards. I've, I've decided they were a bad idea. After all that, I mean, how how is this stuff any worse than before? <laughs> it's happened multiple times at this point. Of course, destroying the cards isn't going to be that easy, as we find out later. But it's just very predictable. You can sort of put these scenes together really yourself and there's no real surprises. And yeah, like I said, it's a really boring movie to sit through. And another final complaint is that in the end, Spider-Man guy survives. And (laughs) the reason he survived seems to be for a twist. The ending of this is very Final Destination, like the ending of that. I got that feeling partly because, like, the sort of couple, if you like, survive. And then you've got, well, you've got, I mean, in that case, the, the nerdy guy didn't survive. But it's like, anyway, another person does survive. And and he reveals then he survived because his roommate let him out of the elevator which makes no sense that's a lame excuse because surely this demonic power would just 
be able to do it anyway. Like, it wouldn't be so easy, his roommate just, like, opening the elevator's doors to let him out. That's bullshit. But, yeah, it felt like that was just an excuse to have. It's like, okay, we made you think he was dead, but he's not really dead, and he's going to pop up at the end and surprise them. It felt a little bit sequel bait, too, because although it doesn't tease the evil it is still around, just having these three survive and kind of riding off into the sunset, if you like, that felt a little bit sequel bait, like maybe they could come back for a sequel. If I had to guess, I think this movie is going to bomb. I, I can't see it doing really that well, so... I, I don't think we'll be getting a sequel, but it did feel like they were trying for that a bit at the end. But yeah, this one really sucked. It it wasn't even bad in an entertaining way. The most interesting thing, as I said, was the whole thing that you say it Taran Taro, not not Tarant. But anyway, yeah, by the numbers stuff, really bland and generic, crappy kills, crappy characters. Just not a good time. So I'm going to say wait for streaming if you want to watch this one. Don't bother going to see it at the cinema. For a rating, I'm going to give it 2.5 out of 10. But that's my review of Turan. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Like and subscribe as always. I do regular horror movie reviews. I also do horror reviews with my co-host Rachel McDonald. We've done a fair bit over the last few years. We've we tend to do franchises as well as other movies. We've done the Scream franchise up to six. We've done the Halloween franchise. We've also done Final Destination speaking of that. So you can check out some of our horror movie reviews as well. But thanks for listening. Take care guys. See you soon.